Well, let's speak with Avi Malamed. He's the founder and CEO of Inside the Middle East Intelligence Perspectives, a Middle East expert speaking to us from Jerusalem. Avi, uh, obviously a much worse disaster could have uh, happened there in that shooting in Hawara. But again, coming during the Sharm el-Sheikh summit, I want to ask you about that summit. It broke up a short time ago. Once again, uh, uh, all the participants besides Israel saying that Israel is committed to, for example, stop discussions on the building of new settlements, Israel not even commenting on it. Is anything actually coming out of these summits in Sharm el-Sheikh? Well, Kalev, uh, again, thank you very much for having me on your show. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we've been in this place many times before. We talked about it, me and you, many times before. And unfortunately, I'm afraid we're going to uh, talk about such incidents in the future as well. Look, the story of the Sharm el-Sheikh conference is actually very interesting because the most interesting thing is about the factors that were not attending the conference, and I'm talking about particularly Hamas and Islamic Jihad. And this is a very interesting situation because what we see today, we see that Hamas and Islamic Jihad are very much self-restrained in the bottom line, meaning that with all the rhetoric put aside, with all the incidents that goes on in the West Bank, they are still trying to keep Gaza Strip out of the uh, circle of military round with Israel, which is very significant. Israel on its side obviously will try to come out from this uh, conference or summit, basically arguing that it was yet another successful mean to further um, boost or establish cooperation with the Palestinian Authority. The Palestinian Authority has to navigate a very delicate situation where on the one hand, they will be held as a responsible and accountable player by the international community, particularly, of course, the United States. But on the other hand, would not be viewed by their own people, the Palestinian, as a collaborator. So the bottom line of this whole situation is that we'll say, yes, there is a common interest of the different participants of the conference to keep things calm as possible. We should expect constant attempts to kind of like disrupt this whole situation. And the most significant thing, of course, would be to follow uh, the reaction and the policy uh, of Hamas and Islamic Jihad vis-a-vis -vis the events that will likely happen later on. Well, well, well let me let me let approaching the Ramadan. Avi, let me ask you about Islamic Jihad because we have this mysterious death of the senior commander of uh, Palestinian Islamic Jihad (PIJ) in Damascus, which they're blaming on Israel. Is that another one of those factors, together, for example, with the uh, uh, tense situation on the Temple Mount, El Aska Mosque compound during Ramadan, that could lead to a real explosion? Well, Kalev, it's a great question, and it's a very significant one. In my estimation, the answer would be no. When, we, when I'm looking today at the situation of Hamas and Islamic Jihad in the context of Gaza Strip, this is what I see. In the end of the day, when they're making the final calculation, they try to put or to leave Gaza Strip for the time being outside of the circle of potential future uh, uh, eruption of violence with Israel for a couple of reasons. First is Ramadan just around the corner. Second, Israel in the last year was significantly alleviating the pressure, the economic pressure on the people of Gaza Strip. And there, there is another significant component that has been kind of like under the radar, but it should be noticed very closely. And I'm talking about the Saudi-Iranian agreement. The reason I'm bringing that to the picture is because it was surprising for Hamas and Islamic Jihad. It caught them off guard. And by the way, this is one of the reasons what we see today is this attempt of Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and their uh, mental brother, so to speak, in the Hezbollah in Beirut, to try and to coordinate and to understand where the wind is blowing to. I think the combination of those three factors that I mentioned in the end of the day will dictate continuation of self-restriction uh, of Hamas and Islamic Jihad. And Kalev, let me remind you, last week, Israel eliminated senior militant activists of both Hamas and Islamic Jihad in the West Bank, the retaliation of Hamas and Islamic Jihad was very, very minor, and it's not by chance. All right, well, uh, whatever we're seeing, we're certainly going to continue seeing, unfortunately, these uh, t these terror attacks in the West Bank, uh, even if uh, they're done sometimes by individuals affiliated with these groups. Avi Malamed, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we're going to be looking at a little more the Palestinian